yo 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 what's going on everyone it's tk and today we're gonna dive into the queen's equipments and we're gonna see which one works the best on each strategy so let's dive in and see this video all right on this attack you're actually going to see me queen charge for maybe the first time in a very long time but i'm not a good queen charge attacker so we're gonna see how i executed on this very compact base which is a good thing for those well frozen arrow yes i'm gonna tell you this the frozen arrow with the queen charge is one of the best combination in this game because of the damage the tunnel 16 sometimes may have in the core she could stay alive a lot better than having healer puppets just coming out randomly you never know when they're gonna come out because you never know when your queen ability will go off and then you could just gonna use you know lose those healers and it would just be a very bad thing for the rest of your attack meanwhile i'm sending the king to the top side and now the queen has a clear access to go in and also look at the damage we have of course a rage will be just fine but in general sometimes there may be expos or some very crazy defenses on her so you may be running out of rage or your last rage spell and that could come up a bit handy with that frozen arrow and my frozen arrow is actually quite max so you know it's going to be a lot better on some of these attacks now i wanted to go ahead with this scaly spell but i realized yeah we got two multi infernos so there is really no point of it so i'm going to go with the wall break going to make the queen invisible she's going to take out the cc and then move on to the you know storage and then the monolith i really wanted to tank it but still we didn't end up doing it but this frozen arrow is just the key thing in the queen charge you can slow down those defenses and those heroes when they are deep in the core meanwhile your headhunters cannot really reach them in time look at that rc takedown beautiful right there you can go ahead and rage the queen whenever she's in the core that's what i do because i get scared from these queen charges but we're gonna have the mini warden with the root riders and of course these are sneaky goblins and the hog rider just random stuff on the top side you can use the frozen arrow with any queen charge army i just had the you know root rider in my mind so i was like because of the video, let me just give it a try in the friendly challenges. And guess what? This was my first try. And we actually tripled this base. I actually crushed this my own base. But yeah, in general, this is what you want to go with the queen equipment for any type of queen chart. It's going to give you a massive advantage over three healers. Trust me on that. Your queen is going to be alive for a long time and get a lot of this stuff. And that's how you get these bases done. We're going to move on to a dragon attack and actually a hydra attack with the cloned loons and see which equipments are best there and which ones you should upgrade. Okay, we are here on a double invisibility base, which I had it in my account. So this would be the perfect example of why you need to run the giant arrow and the healer puppet. Yes two exact opposite abilities than the last base we saw and this is insane the giant arrow if you get it upgraded you can take down air defenses and sweepers so you don't even need those two lightnings sometimes we're gonna go ahead with the dragons and the dragon riders with the blimp and then at the king with the queen because in these attacks guys your queen doesn't go deep in the base she's just on the outside a lot of time her ability will never go off so why not pop it at the beginning get that you know giant arrow into the base getting those spell towers activated making the base look like it's a town of 14 because well without spell towers what do they have it's nothing that can defend the heroes or the dragons they're just gonna cruise through the base especially when there is no sweeper this is how beautiful these two equipments on the queen works and look at this with the king in front of the queen what is there to even take down the king yet imagine the queen behind it it's insane man it's insane even though we didn't take down the cc this attack is an absolutely crushing attack and guys these two equipments will work on any single base and especially legends where you don't sometimes know you might get you know one of those invisibility bases this will help you out a lot to get through them and 
easily get through them. This is what I mean. So hopefully you understood what I meant with these two abilities and how you have to use them with the angles of the queen. You can upgrade that healer puppet first because you don't necessarily need the giant arrow to be maxed, but the healer puppet being maxed helps you out a lot. All right, we are here on one of my Sui Lalo attacks inside the Legends League and I wanted to showcase the difference between of course the healer puppet and the frozen arrow. On Legends League, there are some strategies that you may use and they might take less headhunters. This means a Sui attack, just like any Sui type. You might do a Zap Sui into Root Riders. You might do a Zap Sui Lalo. For example, not a Zap Sui Lalo, but a Zap Lalo, but you have the Sui part, which they don't go too deep. Whenever you want to have the queen on the, you know, kind of edge or the first layer, that frozen arrow is a good thing. But mostly when you have the queen on the edge, just like the last attack, we want to have the healers. But look at that queen taking down the enemy queen, moving forward, slowing down the expo and taking her down. I didn't use a single ice golem or any tanking stuff for the queen. She is by her own taking that entire compartment down and moving on to the scatter shot. Of course, the town hall stayed up, so we have to go ahead and recover in this attack. I really wanted to go with a blimp, even though I dropped a few runes at the beginning and the phoenix tanked at the you know very end, basically, for any kind of traps. Now we have the champion on the lower side. She's going to get added to the yetis, but I hopefully you know was able to make you understand why I use the frozen arrow. It's not going to be perfect. Like Every base is not going to give you the frozen arrow value, or it's the same with the healer puppet. I noticed some of the times that I used to pop the healer puppet, the puppets would just you know die out because of the traps. But you know, you can't really do anything about that. The base sometimes will be designed in a weird way. Clone Rage on the lower side, we're going to add loons on that top side and going for the scatter shot. Once the Hound is reaching the other side, we're going to add more loons to the Archer Tower, even though the back side of this base is hardcore. So we're going to add more group of loons on the side so they can clump up together with the remaining of the spells to this back end of the base, which was a bit hardcore. So we have to, you know, make sure we have a few loons alive. But hopefully I was able to explain this well for you. And also, I didn't do the smash attacks or the spam attacks because they are usually the ones that you take the healer puppet and just the invisibility while just because the healer puppet sometimes will actually help your smash or spam armies they can switch to the root riders switch to super bowlers or something and help you out a lot hopefully this video was helpful for you and if it was leave it a like and subscribe to the channel for more see you on the next one take care and peace